All right. Well, I'm really excited. This is my first one of doing an actual interview today. And I've got Tom O'Brien here. He's an herbalist from Ireland, and he's actually a PhD, which is awesome. Um, and I've been watching his channel for a little while. I'll put all the links down below and uh, listed here. So it's The Mental Herbalist. Go check him out. He's awesome. But we're going to talk to him today about uh, so a lot of different things as to what got him into herbalism and just some of his thoughts on uh, uh, herbalism and herbs and a uh, whole bunch of stuff that's going to be fun. So uh, let's go ahead and kick it off. Uh, Tom, nice to see you today. Yeah, great, Eric. I'm really happy to be here with you. Uh, you know, it's great to just share the passion for natural healing and herbs with other people like yourself. And you're doing some great work on your own channel, uh, which I started following recently. So. Um, no, I'm delighted to be here and I love talking to people about herbal medicine and, and natural healing because there's such a need in the world, uh, in a world where, you know, medicine is very shaped by pharmaceuticals. So Absolutely, I, yeah. it's a passion of mine to get people to think and reflect about medicine, not about herbs and natural healing. So mm -hmm. just, they're so powerful and um, yeah, yeah, looking forward to this chat. Awesome. Well, uh, for my for the people who don't know you, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and what got you into herbal medicine? Well, yeah, like I'm, I became a herbalist in 2012, I think. So mm. uh, that's about eight years ago. Um, it's kind of there was a couple of different influences really in in my journey, but the catalyst was a very good friend of mine died mm. in 2007, Joe died of an aneurysm mm. and we were really close friends and yeah. you know i had lost my father 10 years before that right. and you know i suppose in my own family side um my father my uncles all had heart disease and mm -hmm. they lived in the south of ireland and i used to you know we'd go to funerals and after the funeral, we'd be having a breakfast, typical Irish breakfast with bacon and eggs and, and so forth. And we'd be saying that this is the last time we're having this type of food because we were so conscious of the need to be healthier. But what happened was I took it seriously and I became very interested in, in, in my own health, you know, because of the risk to heart disease in my family. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so when Joe died then as well, he was only 47, so he died of an aneurysm, um, partly to do with grief and also my interest in, herb in natural healing. I, I just needed to do a course in something. So I did a bit of research and I came across this course in herbal medicine and I had fitted where I had, I had been kind of coming from, because as you mentioned my PhD, it's in adult education, mm. but I was looking at um, a, a I was doing a, I was doing a research on a drug project in Dublin for young people. Oh, okay. And uh, I basically my research question was like analysis of the knowledge used to treat addiction. Mm. So in looking at looking at addiction, the way addiction is is treated, um, you you can see clearly that medicine is the dominant model of treatment. Right. And I explored other models and became very interested in in herbal medicine at that time. That, I finished that in 2004, and I'd done a night class around that time in, in homeopathy and holistic health, just for myself. Uh, so the combination of my research, my family, my friend, um, you know, ultimately human suffering, because the loss of people prematurely through death is, is, is a form of suffering, and then people suffering addiction is another type of suffering. So in response to people suffering, I, I, I found myself studying herbal medicine and I just loved it. I mean, you know, primarily for my own health. Um, mm, yeah. You know, if, it, if, if I ever, if I never practice as a herbalist, just becoming a herbalist for my own health has been a great insurance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and actually I don't have, in Ireland, you know, we have public health uh, and private health. And a lot of people have to take out private health insurance because the public health system is is quite uh, poor. There's a huge waiting list for treatments. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's been a great um, investment. And it, it also, more recently, herbal medicine and, you know, my spiritual journey has become more to the fore. Um, I'm more thinking now about 
herbs to open up consciousness, herbs to, to nurture the psychic, you know, to heal at that deeper level. And I think, you know, that's really interesting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was interesting that you mentioned about your friend. I had heard about the, your friend from one of your videos before. Mm. That's the first time I heard that he had an aneurysm, which is yeah. actually how my dad died as well. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. So it's just like, man, uh, that's With interesting age. because that didn't actually shock me at that time to get into herbs. So, yeah. Um, what, but what age was your dad? Um, he was um, yeah, right around 64, I think, at the time. Mm. So, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's young. Yeah. But uh, my, my mom as well, she's always been in pretty good health. Um, she has actually like an aerobics instructor for a while. Mm -hmm. And she's always been kind of health conscious, even more so than I was. Yeah. Um, but it's oddly enough, um, I, it's like this year has actually been probably my most healthy year. And I think I attributed that a lot to starting the YouTube channel and mm -hmm. doing all these investigations on yeah. herbs myself. Yeah. And the more I've researched and the more I've studied, um, it not only got me into that, and it also helped lead me down the path to becoming a full vegetarian. So I'm, I'm yeah. not sure what your diet is now, mm. as far as how all that's concerned. I mean, obviously, there's nothing against people who still no, no, but it's, it's 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 an important part of healing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I I'm not a vegetarian or vegan, but um, mm -hmm. but I grew up on a dairy farm. My father was a, a dairy farmer, so yeah. I grew up uh, drinking raw milk, and oh, okay. um, raw milk is is now coming back, you know, as a trend in terms of health. Right. Um, you know, and I used to buy raw milk here in Dublin in the food market to make uh, my own kefir milk, which mm -hmm. is really, you know, fermented foods right. would be a big thing. But um, I would eat very little meat um, and very little dairy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the course and the experience of being herbless has definitely mm -hmm. um, moved me more towards plant-based diet. Right. Um, as far as the meats you do eat, do you tend to go more for um, free range stuff or people from small butchers or small farmers? Than yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ireland has a very good reputation for its meat. You know, it's mostly grass fed and, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it would be local. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think one, one of the biggest reasons I'd, I'd actually go off meat is for the environmental reason right. as well as well as the health benefits. But um the environmental impact of meat is huge. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, so. I mean, in some of the research I've seen, they, they can say that it actually has like an equal impact to oil in some ways. Yeah. That it's that, that serious. And I've been people, I just don't hear that research compared to hearing the stuff about how cars and oil and all those things really affect it. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it's, mm -hmm. it's true. It's true. Specifically, um, if you could change one thing about the medical industry, mm. um, what do you think it would be? I think uh, eclecticism is, is the word that comes to mind, which is, you know, uh, health use, like uh, medicine in, in America particularly, which is, you know, a, a leading kind of country in terms of the development of, of modern medicine, mm -hmm. particularly around pharmaceuticals. But there was a time back before... It, before the American Medical Association was set up in the 1840s, uh, medicine was very eclectic in, in America. I've just, that's, I know about America because I've, I've read books have, have been written about that. And that meant that people had a, a, a lot of, it was normal to choose to go to a chiropractor, to go to a herbalist, mm -hmm. go to um, uh, a homeopathist, you know, and, and, and many other forms of, of medicine. And that's, that I think today, I think, um, uh, and you can see it in the Corona kind of pandemic response, you know, that medicine, you know, is, is very dominant in terms of how we think about viruses right. and how we think about the coronavirus. So if there was one thing I could change, which is kind of my passion, is to, that, that herbal medicine um, would become part of you know choice that people have that it's not demonized or um you know it's not pushed out to the margins that right. within our hospitals you know why not involve a herbalist in as part of a multidisciplinary team right because there's a lot of issues you know kidney issues liver issues heart issues that can all be supported by herbal medicine and benef benefit the patient 
Exactly. Um, yeah. But you know, that's unlikely going to happen because uh, the way hospitals and the way medicine and the way the way people are taught medicine, you know, uh, pharmaceutical and other vested interests, you know, like medical people that make medical um, equipment and so forth, they invest, they fund some of the medical training. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then they fund the building of hospitals. So it's, it's designed to keep out other types of healing, other systems of healing. Right. Um, so I, I don't know, uh, am I wishful thinking in thinking <laughs> that herbal medicine could end up in a hospital? But what I do find is that I have a lot of conversations with people in my community, mostly online, um, that that want choices, want want to think differently about healing, right. particularly depression. Mm-hmm. You know, people, yeah. uh, last night I was talking to somebody who, you know, the first instinct of their doctor was to prescribe them an antidepressant, but they didn't want to go on an antidepressant. Um, so people people need to have choices. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Live in hope. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I very much have the, the same thoughts about it. I, I think um, from, from my perspective, when you're talking about that, it seems like the, the easiest way for it to become connected with the actual um, hospitals and med- medicinal community at large is probably to have more of a groundswell in coming back from the people that, that they don't think it's some quack um, type thing anymore, that they start recognizing as another valid thing, that yeah. as more research comes out and as yeah. more um, channels like us are even yeah. come out be showing yeah. like, look, you know, these these been used throughout history this way. Yeah. It's like until yeah. just recently when people are telling you it's a quack thing yeah. um, that this is the way people cured things. So yes, yeah. Um, yeah, the more you, you, you just kind of get that back into the general consciousness, the more mm. people will actually ask for the change and the yeah. more it'll force it on them. Yeah. But, One of the things that fascinates me is, is how, how people think, you know, and how, how, people, how people's thoughts are controlled by greater systems, whether it be religion or politics mm-hmm. or culture and, or, or about medicine. And it seems that, you know, people want to be part of the crowd. You know, it's a human desire to be mm-hmm. accepted and liked. So Absolutely, yeah. being a herbalist, um, I, I always thought it was a good thing to do. I never, I never thought that, I never thought anything else. I just followed my intuition and my instinct. Mm. But as an academic, you know, with a PhD, um, looking back, I realized that it was a naive thing to do in my academic career because um, it like I haven't really had an academic career but I always assumed just doing different things would be would make me a better person and a better teacher mm-hmm. um, so even even academia like the way universities you know think people are not really taught how to think critically or think independently you know if you, if you look at what's going on in America particularly in the politics so divisive um, mm-hmm. or around the world about migration um, or in the UK and Ireland we have Brexit and, and so mm-hmm. forth you know that um, I, I'm always surprised at the assumptions people make about their own health. Um, it's like the health system in Ireland is designed for when you crash or break down. Right. You know, it's not. People are people are told like more or less. People believe that you don't have to worry about your health until you have a health problem. Right. And then we'll fix you and we'll put you back together, which is usually not the case because the fixing and putting back together usually isn't always so quite successful. Now, if I had a car accident or broke a leg, I'd prefer to be in a hospital than go to a herbalist, <laughs> you know? Hospitals are very good at right. certain medical things. Mm-hmm. But um, as you said, Eric, you know, channels like yours and mine and others are helping people to reflect and think and um, engage in learning new mm-hmm. ways of looking at health. Sometimes I get a bit disheartened in that process, but uh, you know, you get re-motivated and mm-hmm. you, you pick up the the battle again. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's always a wave to go through. Yeah, mm. so, but there's like I said, that's natural life. And I've heard you just mention that on your channel a couple times that it's really good to just let that come through. If you run into a problem with some depression or mm. anxiety or some other you know emotions that people are consider you know 
bad emotions or bitter yeah. emotions or negative emotions. Yeah. Uh, they're actually just emotions. That's something you just have to work through mm. and allow it to either run its course and then you're good or it's something that you just, as it's happening, you try and just get used to that pattern, like going, okay, why is this happening? Let me work through it. So mm. then I can just let it run its course and then come out better from it. Yeah, it. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's really important. And um, I had a client the other day for a consultation and uh, I, I actually mapped out, I ended up draw, devising this kind of grid, which is kind of based on ritual. So it's like the idea that um, herbs, are really powerful in healing but if you do other things with them like for example i, I talked about energy cleansing mm -hmm. you know particularly people that have psychological emotional problems they need to cleanse their energy and just having a shower for example is a is a good way to cleanse your energy um i'm a real water person but probably because i'm a, a cancer sign but mm -hmm. uh, I, I love water um mm -hmm. and cleansing your energy is a good ritual other rituals then like um exercise movement uh, spiritual yep. rituals, uh, food rituals, social rituals. And like the, the more rituals you have as part of your day, uh, and then each day, the more cumulative effect will be your well being, right. and herbs being one of those rituals. Mm -hmm. But herbs on their own, and then not having rituals or doing things that are not good for you, like not exercising, not cleansing your energy, mm -hmm. not moving, not grounding, not connecting socially, you know, you won't really recover out of a depression unless you you build in these rituals right. you know um, and as you said the psychological emotion rituals of learning to understand your emotions learning to you know stay with your emotions and the process rather than trying to dull them or suppress them because that's ultimately what antidepressants do mm -hmm. they they suppress emotions right. uh, and they dull people so anti-depression it's like against depression. You know, I think I had a post there. There was something I was thinking about the other day about um, depression hmm. as something we actually need because like the seasons, you know, the leaves now are starting to fall off the trees. The tree is more vulnerable, exposed. Mm -hmm. um, it's letting go as it goes into hibernation and these come out in the spring. And we're the same. There's a reason why we can be depressed. And if we don't, as you said, figure that out, understand that and learn to accept, you know, because we do experience loss, you know, people have loss in terms of obviously the loss of a person is a big loss, but some people lose their jobs. Right. Some people lose their security, lose their health, lose their looks, you know, in terms of I've lost my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too depressed about that. Um, there's a lot of pressure on people to look in a certain way and right. people have a lot of body issues, you know, mm -hmm. um, and so it's, yeah, it's, it's exciting. And I, I, I'm, I'm still learning, you know, I, I love learning, you know, how to be a better herbalist, more effective herbalist, how to help people better. And uh, I'm still learning about herbs. I'm still learning about healing. Um, I love learning. That's, that's a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think anybody in this kind of field has to be because there is so much more to always pick up. And yeah. it's the same thing with me was like my wife asked me like a little while ago, I was like, so um, what happens when you run out of uh, things to cover? I'm like going, there's not going to be any time soon. I'm running out of things to cover. There's just so many more herbs <laughs> for me to cover. There's so many more, you know, yeah. you know, properties or even like certain plants and stuff that I can cover. So it's like, yeah, yeah there's tons of different things out there yeah. to learn yeah. and figure out and yeah. continue on with. So Absolutely. It's Absolutely. not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Let me switch into a fun question here. I got mm. my tea here and I noticed you like doing teas a lot too. Yeah. So I was like wondering specifically, um, what are some of your favorite teas that you like to drink? Yeah, um, I drink a lot of peppermint tea. Uh, I, I have a box of it in my drawer at work, in my day mm -hmm. job and a couple of boxes here. So peppermint will be one of my favorites. Um, I love this, the, the mint, the minty taste. Yeah. Um, it's good, it's a calming herb for the, for the gut particularly. Uh, mm -hmm. and soothing. I, 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 I was in a shop the other day and I bought a whole heap of, you know, teas, um, you know, uh, combination teas. So I, I, I love, yeah. I love experimenting with teas, but I love making my own teas as well. I had a mugwort tea there the other day because I, yeah, I, I, I was making a video on mugwort and it's quite a nice, it was a lovely tea. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I love making blends and adding a little bit of licorice. Uh, licorice mm -hmm. is lovely as well. 
just mm-hmm. like the raw licorice root. It's it's a lovely tea. When I when I mix licorice root, there's a lot of kind of dust particles, you know, and straight away I can feel my chest clearing. You know, it's like there's phlegm mucus moving. Yeah. So powerful. The peppermint would be would be my favorite. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good. Yeah, I'm a big uh, mint fan myself. So mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> pretty much in that same regard here. <laughs> As far as uh, staying on the teas, just for like one more, um, mm. what do you think are some of your uh, the teas that are like your favorite teas for health? Obviously, any mm. herb can offer different types of things that are good for it. Like, yeah. But are like there are some ones that are like more go to ones. Do you think you're thinking general health? Obviously, go to these ones or those ones. Yeah, I mean, I, I focus a lot on mental health, so um, you know, teas like chamomile, particularly, you know. Um, Chamomile is great, relaxing herb. It has many qualities, but it's it's very calming on the nervous system, right. and you know it's associated with helping people sleep better. So, um, and it's a nice flower as well. It's mm-hmm. a nice feel. It has a nice smell, nice scent. Yeah. Um, so chamomile, and then sometimes, you know, if I was making a blend for somebody, you know, I'd, I'd be looking at wild lettuce, for example. It's a really good nervous yeah. system herb, and hops as well um so i'd i'd, I'd kind of try to combine leafy you know flowering parts um right. and experimenting as well um i love valerian valerian is i i would drink valerian every day mm-hmm. <laughs> and i buy herbs for for my practice i have to be careful not to use all the valerian <laughs> <laughs> excellent valerian you know obviously is a root it's the root part and uh, mm-hmm. so Sometimes I would recommend people to make a decoction, you know, mm-hmm. so it's just basically the same as making a tea, but you brew it on a pot a bit longer because you're trying to extract the value, the medicinal value out of yeah. the root, and it just takes a bit more. So you have to kind of mm-hmm. decoct it, which is just let it simmer for a bit yeah. um, and then add that to water or add it to a tea. You could store it in the fridge for a while, um, but you have um, valerian is great. I think we covered this a little bit already, but mm. uh, you you talked a little bit on your channel um, on some videos about trying to integrate um, both the body and the mind mm. and how the medical industry is more focused on one side than the other and that we need to really balance between uh, both aspects of the body, like the emotions. And we talked, you talked about depression already. Mm. And in regards to that more specifically, I mean, what can you tell me about from the medical perspective, they, they more focus on just dealing with the body and not so much the other aspects that can lead to causing problems, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a wealth of research now on the relationship between the mind and the body, particularly in psychology, mm-hmm. the power of the mind over the body in terms of creating health and wellness versus illness and sickness and disease. So, you know, it's it's the relationship between the mind and the body is studied you know, in a number of areas, psychology and um, spirituality. Um, but medicine is still stuck in a very old paradigm, um, you know, that uh, what's called sometimes referred to as physicalism, which is the body. You know? mm-hmm. Medicine really works on the belief, you know, that you have to be able to see it under a microscope mm-hmm. uh, to, to know that it's real. So. There's a huge debate about the mind. Where is the mind? What is the mind? What is the relationship between the mind and the body? Um, and do people have a mind, or you know, is it just a brain? Is it, is it you know, a psychological system, or is it a spiritual yeah. system? In medicine, then being focused on physicalism, you know, the physical aspect of the body and the cells is is missing out on the whole quantum science approach, which is, right. you know, deeper than the physical. Now mm-hmm. we have we have scientific evidence for energy in the body you know the energy right. system that you know the chinese talk about the meridians the meridian lines mm-hmm. yin yang and, and chi medicine hasn't really caught up with this this new research you know that um mm-hmm. the, the, the the at a, at a quantum level at an, 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 right. an atom level in, in in deeper than the cells mm-hmm. you know there's more more stuff going on at that level than there is at a cellular level which is kind yeah. of the, the idea that disease is caused by cells mutating or whatever. Yeah, I haven't seen any research myself. Maybe you have, as far as um, them doing 
specific tests like they did on water, where I've seen some of the tests they've done on that, where they like did a lot of uh, things where they did nothing but positive things with the water. Yeah. And it showed a completely different structure compared yeah. to when they were being completely negative with it. There's a lot of different types of research. I don't kind of dig into the, 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 the primary research I, I look at. Mm -hmm. I, I'd be kind of reading books and, and authors that are talking about this research. Right. I'm more, in, I'm more interested in the philosophy ideas than, than the actual scientific um, nuances of it. But um, uh, then, at a, you know, if you look now, the whole movement about mindfulness, mm -hmm. you know, that mindfulness and well-being and holistic approach to life, people right. are returning to farmers markets, people wanting organic, um, people realizing exercise and all, the, all of these ways are about nurturing your health. It's the right. mind and body. So people don't really need to be convinced anymore now. That it's, it's become nearly mainstream now. Yeah. But medicine is still caught in this older, older way of looking at things. So I know from my own experience now, you know, having worked in addiction for a number of years, mm -hmm. and um, it's, it's uh, most people suffering is to do with uh, their social experience, mm -hmm. you know, relationships and the perception and experience of relationships. You know, people feeling isolated, lonely. There's a lot of research now on loneliness. Loneliness, is, yeah. they say, is worse than smoking. So if we know that love is a medicine, it's healing, connect, mm -hmm. social connection is really important. And, um, you know, that, that's because we're energy beings right. and we're interconnected beings. We're not individuals. And this is coming back to the thing about medicine physicalism is that there's a, an idea called reductionism in medicine mm -hmm. in science really where just basically where they try to reduce complexity down to simple uh, parts yeah so it's like in in medicine you have a specialist for the liver hepatology you have a specialist for the heart mm -hmm. cardiology you have a specialist for the mind psychiatry you have a specialist for the, the the toes and the foot podiatrists yeah yeah podiatrists mm -hmm. So medicine has divided up the body into all these different areas. Mm -hmm. And depending which part is wrong, you go to that specialist. Right. But the part that's wrong, the part that's suffering is because it's basically in, in Chinese medicine and in herbal medicine, energy medicine, the idea that, you know, symptoms in the body are an expression of being out of balance. Right. So, you know, it's in herbal medicine, we're taught not, not to treat the symptoms. Yep. You know, uh, like, for example, depression is a symptom mm -hmm. of something else that's going on, which is right. suffering and loss. So try to treat the whole person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, uh, the mind-body connection, I, I'm more and more convinced uh, and more and more focusing on myself because um, I realize that uh, people intuitively understand this as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important as a herbalist, sometimes you get kind of caught into reductionism a little bit. Somebody mm -hmm. comes with a problem, you're trying to fix that problem. And yeah. sometimes you don't stand back and look at the wider issue or the historical issue in the person's life. Obviously, some people do have genetic uh, histories that lead them to have certain diseases, you know, rare diseases and, and conditions. Right. But most, most diseases, most um, physical or psychological diseases uh, develop over time mm -hmm. and they are as a result of our experience with the environment and our social social experience mm -hmm. um, and if you feel very insecure or lacking in confidence then you're going to try and get more confidence and love from people so you'll do things to do that and some of those things you do like not believing in yourself or right. taking too much alcohol or mm -hmm. drugs or eating the wrong foods you know it, it's all a way of coping with stress right. you know food has become a medicine you know, Hippocrates, the father of medicine, you know, the famous quote that let food be your medicine and medicine your food. But now people use medicine, use food as a medicine to cope, you know, so like right. e eating foods that are comforting, but mm -hmm. not, not good if you eat them in high doses. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the interesting thing I think as well with herbs is that uh, it, it's, it, it just goes to show that anything in life is that way. It's like you have too much of an herb, you can still cause problems to yourself. Yeah, yeah, just absolutely. Just like you could with anything else. Absolutely, yeah. yeah.
and so it's very important that everything has to have its balance in that sense. Everything, and I think everything. that that's that's one lesson I take from it is that um, the, when you see that in the herbalism world, especially that it makes it makes you start thinking about the other aspects where like, yes, everything needs to find some kind of nice equilibrium if you're going to really make the whole the body work properly and yeah. help um, all of your systems work correctly is they each one of them needs to find that place essentially that happy place that nice medium place that's like you're not getting too much of this or too little of this and throwing yourself out of whack yeah and yeah either with the herbs or with um, whatever mentally is happening with you you don't you know overcompensate with something yeah and i think that can happen the same way on the other side where there's people who overcompensate with toxic max masculinity or yeah. with working out and they yeah. over push themselves or anorexics yeah. or you know all yeah. these different things are symptoms of people over pushing themselves yeah. Yeah. because of a mental problem yeah that they think they need this and they yeah. just needed to have it sorted out to see yeah yeah they really no that's that's very true it reminds me of one of the principles of mindfulness um which is called uh i think it's called over striving or striving mm -hmm. striving is always trying to do more and it's it's one of the weaknesses that i would have myself i'm a striver mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, my my desire to learn more is kind of a striving to kind of you know ultimately it's, it creates more security for me but that striving is is trying to, is nearly getting out of the present moment so it's it's something that i'm working on myself uh, yeah. so uh, <laughs> but it, and that, that brings me back into balance so you know we're all human and we have to kind of accept that we're human but uh you know it's what what do you want from life you know what what are you striving for you know mm -hmm. um and I suppose we're all we all want peace and happiness isn't it exactly yeah but we we have we have that already if we just tune into it mm -hmm. um it can't be got outside of ourselves right it, it's it's within us if we just sit sit and sit through the i think a lot a lot of a lot of our experience of life is conditioning mm -hmm. you know we've been conditioned uh through our culture our society our mm -hmm. our, our, our our family our, our spirituality I'm trying to, I'm more influenced now by, you know, the non-dualist tradition. It's kind of Indians, the India tradition of spirituality, which is, is really holistic approach to life. It's less about the mind. It's more about just being, you know, right. that uh, in Western culture, we're very much striving as well. You know, there's, it's, it's embedded within us to do better, you know, to, but then what do we do when we earn more money? What do we spend more money on? We buy a bigger car. What does that do? Give us status, you know? status yeah. doesn't really make you well mm -hmm. so if you get you know we can get caught into this striving pattern in life where we're constantly trying to improve ourselves but we're already perfect mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah in so many ways if we just in, look at the, where we're at and just kind of try and be happy with that and then yeah. it's like if you want to go for a goal that's always great but it's like try and find a way to just find that happiness within and then just build upon that from there absolutely yeah absolutely yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> very much agree so um tom you have an etsy shop you recently opened yeah yeah that's right um and i i had some problems with it today because uh, they couldn't verify my identification oh, no. so it's it's it's, <laughs> it's i think it might you mightn't be able to get anything on it today but uh <laughs> I had to try and fix that later, but yeah, no, I I just opened it there about a month ago, um, because I was trying to find a way to respond to the stress of the pandemic, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so I started thinking about, you know, trying to change my model, and and mm -hmm. you know, it's worked very well. I've come up with some nice formulas, um, you know, one called compassion, another one called acceptance. You know, and it's to try and support people who are experiencing stress at this time. Um, so it's yeah, people are responding really well, um, and it's really nice packaging the herbs and sending them off to different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, mostly Ireland, the UK, and mm -hmm. America. And uh, yeah, it's nice, uh, nice way to connect with people, right. teaching people about herbs and, and sharing herbs. So I'm mean, really enjoying it. Yeah, it's. There's a bit of movement there, so I, I have a nice community as well that I built up through YouTube and yeah. and the Instagram more recently, and um, I'm enjoying this way of connecting with them, you know. Right. And I, I I love mixing the formulas. It's something I love about herb mm -hmm. medicine. It's just 
the kind of the lab approach, like mixing the formulas, putting them into bottles, putting labels on them. You know, I live in, in an apartment in the city, so I, I, I'm not, I don't have the luxury, you know, to be the kind of country herbalist. Mm-hmm. I do a bit of foraging when I can. Yeah. And I'm going to try and do some of my own kind of uh, foraging formulas as well. You know, maybe small amounts on SD, you know, mm-hmm. because um, that's a nice way to share as well. But uh, I, I tend to buy my, my herbs in, a, in Ireland or in the UK. And I, I make the formulas then. But uh, yeah, no, enjoy, enjoy that part of it. It's going well. Fantastic. Are there some uh, other products or uh, different types of uh, tinctures you're looking at getting on the shop soon? Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've put one up today called Kindness. I have a, a sample of it here. Um, mm-hmm. oops, they're Kindness. And I'm, I'm enjoying the, the naming of them because that's your question about the mind-body connection. And right. Uh, what I've been able to do with, say, the, 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 the compassion formula, it's called compassion. Mm-hmm. You know, it's for people that have low mood or a bit of depression. And it contains uh, St. John's wort and wormwood and mugwort. Mm-hmm. But wormwood is a really bitter herb. Right. And um, so it's called compassion because we need to be compassionate to ourselves and not to run away from the suffering, as we talked about earlier. So yeah. by experiencing the bitterness we are being compassionate to ourselves. It sounds paradoxical, mm. but um, and kindness then is mm. is about being kind to ourselves because it's particularly this one is for f- uh, people that have an overactive thyroid, mm. and the thyroid is really important psychologically and spiritually because it it's about how we connect with the world through communication. Right. And sometimes people who suffer from thyroid problems they're striving to communicate with others, but it's, they're not connecting. And it's because they're, they're, they're seeking too much validation outside themselves. Yeah. So by turning in on ourselves, being kind to ourselves, um, uh, we can be kinder to others then, really. Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying that part of it. Yeah, I've put up uh, um, some capsules as well. Um, Brami um, is a nice uh, capsule for depression. It works very strong on the liver. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have probably about 10 other types of capsules that I, I source from India that I'll be, I'll be putting up in time. And uh, I will now, I'm, I'm looking forward to making a, um, a gratitude formula mm-hmm. uh, because I like the word gratitude, mm-hmm. but um, you know, and a recovery formula for people that have addiction issues, you know, so mm-hmm. supporting the liver, particularly in the heart. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's um, I'm really enjoying that, yeah. Um, well, I'm going to add your links uh, and everything down below uh, for you. Is there any other way that uh, people could contact you if they want to get in touch with you? Yeah, I, I'm very active on on um, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I enjoy Instagram because it's it's a uh, you know there's different ways to connect there with you know stories and um, reels. Now is a new part of it, but you know people often message me there, inquire about herbs. I I put up mm-hmm. photos, um, so. The men, uh, at the mental health herbalist on Instagram, you can put the link as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love YouTube as well. I love <clears throat> engaging with people in in, in the comments, um, and it's it's a great community, and um, I've got a lot of support there and a lot of encouragement. And yeah. I'm back making videos there again. It can get disheartening on YouTube because the algorithm isn't really against, isn't really supporting the likes of us. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> so. I've set up a new email kind of subscribe, subscriber mm-hmm. thing so I can send direct per- mo- right. notifications. But yeah, I know um, on the Mental Health Herbalist on, on YouTube or the Mental Health Herbalist on Instagram. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much for talking with me today, Tom. Thanks, Eric. I really enjoyed the chat and I appreciate the work you're doing. So keep up the good work and uh, it's great. All right. <laughs>